So well, thank you for joining me, Ola, over here. And it's a pleasure to be able to have this interview with you before the COMEX AI conference takes place. Uh, you are the director of DotLines Group. And uh, from what I understand, you are also an angel investor and you've had experience, uh, wide experience in uh, startup uh, with a good track record of defining, creating, de developing and implementing first move a new technology in the mobile marketing, gaming, blockchain, and advertising industry. So I think you've, uh, you have a lot of experience and you've, you've been through a lot and we're very excited to have you on the 2nd of June. Uh, could you please tell me a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, thank you, Amir, for letting me be part of this uh, conference. And um, I'm originally from Sweden, but I left Sweden in 93. So I haven't been uh, resident of Sweden for a very long time. I spent 10 years in the US and Latin America another 10 years, Africa, China for two years, and now in Southeast Asia for the last five years. I was involved uh, from the early start, from starting 2005 with mobile technology. So I've been developing different mobile technologies when it comes to both in the gaming industry and also in new technology so forth. And from that learning experience, traveling the different continents and working in different groups, I became part of a bigger group, uh, Dotlines group, uh, four years ago, where I'm a director on business uh, development for the group internationally, where we are a 1,000 strong team over 12 different countries at the moment in 12 different business verticals. And one of them we invested heavily in the last couple of years is uh, internet security. And it all from the range from home security when it comes to internet um, security until enterprise and ISPs and uh, small and medium businesses. So we're covering the whole range. That's and obviously uh... competing with big, big brands and big uh, others, we have uh, come up with the idea that we are positioning ourselves a little bit different. We actually made firewalls and other products user-friendly. And that's where our edge is in this marketplace today. That's very interesting. Thank you for going through that, uh, that overview of your background. I'll go into more detail shortly about, uh, your, uh, about the services that your company and yourself provide. Um, in terms of uh, AI, I mean, AI now is a kind of um, a very popular term which is being used uh, quite commonly and it's the main theme of our conference. Uh, in, in, in specific in relation to cybersecurity, uh, AI can help to identify, prior, prioritize risk, uh, can identify, spot any malware on a network, uh, can guide incident response and intrusions before they even start. Can you Tell me, uh, what are the main benefits of AI in cybersecurity? I believe uh, the time, because that's one of the most important, I believe, today. Because when there is a DDoS attack or any kind of threat onto a network or somebody's uh, network, the time element is the most important to be able to detain and to uh, assess and make sure that the threat is taken care of. And in a normal wave today, uh, when you have inland uh, firewalls and protection, it can go days before you actually been able to analyze uh, correctly and taking care of a threat like a DDoS attack. And with AI, you can actually, and also making what is the most in preferred now in, in the industry, everything should be cloud-based, correct? And by having, instead of focusing on the whole data process of uh, the data that you have in your network, you're actually taking data pockets out of that network and analyze and predict and automate that process to make sure that you can actually prevent and immediately take action regarding threats. And I think that is gonna grow uh, very big in the coming years because I think it's one of the most important. And um, I mean, uh, who, who would you recommend? Of course, uh, cybersecurity affects everyone, but who would you say are the main industries 
uh, kind of the size of the companies that should be investing in uh, cybersecurity and AI systems and cybersecurity. Uh, can you I go believe, into more detail? Yeah, obviously the first one will be, I think governments looking into it. You saw now in Singapore, for example, the government in investing in a new AI cybersecurity for the whole network of data in, in Singapore. Yes. And I think the biggest players that obviously are the network providers and the ISPs and big enterprise house, uh, cloud hostings uh, companies, because for them, uh, they live of being connected and making sure that the network is up and running. And without disruption, obviously, they have a better care of their customers and everybody is more um, in tune and happy with their networks. So I think they are obviously the first ones. But looking in what happens today after one year in lockdown uh, globally is not only the big corporations, it's also the small SMBs that are attacked, hospitals. There is also homes because phishing attacks on your bank data has uh, grown. Uh, I mean, it's in crazy the amount of growth in hackers it, because it's very, very easy prey. And uh, I think we will see a lot of changes in technology as a way of behavior, how to address this, uh, these threats. Correct. Now, thank you for mentioning that. And uh, actually, my next question was going to be in relation to how the pandemic has changed because Obviously, cyber cybersecurity will only get more increasingly uh, important for uh, even the smaller players. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, how would how, how would our delegates uh, benefit from uh, attending your seminar? I think it's about learning exactly the latest what's going on in the process of AI and why it should be used in some areas yeah. and why it's so effective because it's about not have disruption in, in your business in making sure that you're are more cost effective in the sense of protecting your data mm. and making sure that your end uh, consumer of that data is protected and as well is uh, having a good customer service. Because we work in many regions here in, in Southeast Asia, in Indonesia, India, in mm. Bangladesh, Malaysia, etc. And the biggest problem with the ISPs are the thing when something happened, it takes them a very long time to solve the issue. And I think that is the one of the best cost efficient way for anyone in the industry to look into, to learn more about it and uh, implement into their uh, existing uh, operation of today. Thank you. And uh, who would you recommend to attend in terms of the positions and specialization? Uh, I mean, would it be a mix of, um, uh, would it be a mix to include like academics, students, enthusiasts, as well as business and government? I think everybody should be involved uh, in the sense why, because from learning from the staying one year at home yeah. and seeing other families where they have younger kids at home, you're working from a home, maybe you're uh, working as a lawyer or you're working an accountant and so on. And all their data has actually been very unprotected, unpro uh, yeah. specifically in this region, meaning that the kids are using the same Wi-Fi or internet, doing games, downloading a lot of ads and malwares and adwares, etc. And you, on the same time, are you doing Zoom calls and other calls, conference calls, utilizing uh, maybe connectivity to your office to get some information. And not having that protective is enormous dangers in Perfect. today's uh, society. And that's why it's so easy prey for hackers today. Correct. I think it's it's uh, having the knowledge to understand that it's a major risk. And I think the awareness is there now. And uh, it's something which uh, you can't go without. Um, my final question is in relation to the comics event generally. Uh, can you tell me uh, why are you excited to be part of comics? As you know, it's a 30 year old event for Oman and uh, it's the first time it's happening virtually. So I want to know why you're looking forward to it. We look forward because the, seeing the progress of Oman the last five years, especially also in the 
IT industry. I mean, you even have a fiber optic manufacturing that is uh, actually one of the best in the region. And seeing the development in the whole MENA region and first mover on to, to mobile and the connectivity, the speed of connectivity and the development from the telcos, from the ISPs and the people in this area has been enormous. But what has been missed out a little bit, I think, is the end consumer. End consumer is actually getting access to all of this, but it needs, I believe, uh, a little bit caretaking, both from government and private sector, of working together to making sure not only in educating, but as well learning and implementing the best strategies when it comes to data protection, IT threats, and so on, because it evolves all of us. Of course, of course. Uh, thank you for, uh, for speaking with me, Ola, and uh, for all the uh, interesting advice and recommendations you've given. We look forward to uh, listening to you in more detail on the 2nd of June, and uh, we'll see you at COMEX then. Thank you very much. Um, thank, thank you. you.